Good afternoon. I'm a little uneasy standing up here. Many of you might know more about what I'm going to talk about than I do. You might come to different conclusions than I come to. But then again, that might actually not be that bad, because my goal now today is not that you just follow my thought, take it home, and take it for granted. But if you, in the next 10 minutes or so, think about the concepts of leading on and learning and get some insight out of that, that would be plenty. But before I dive into that, let me first understand a little more of who I am talking to. So um, who of you is in a leadership role? Raise your hand. That is a little more than a third of the audience in my guessing. Um, and who of you is a teacher? That's kind of 10%, maybe. Uh, did anybody raise their hand on both questions? Oh, yes, very good. Very good. Uh, that is basically what I want to talk about, because I think that leaders can learn a lot from teachers. Now, let's start in the beginning. And the beginning of this, for me, is cool. School didn't work for me. My grades were kind of OK, but my heart was never in it. And after 13 years of sitting around there, and after finishing my last exam, I started to actually learn. I sat down at home and learned math and physics and economics, how to use a typewriter, all these things. 13 years sitting around, hanging out with friends. What went wrong? I didn't want to learn from my teachers. They didn't have any spark in their eyes. I didn't want to learn from these people. They didn't convince me. And of course, that's not true for all my teachers. There were some that were different, and particularly one was extremely different. That was my music teacher, who was on a mission. He believed that music is one of the most important things in life. You should understand music. You should play music. And with his enthusiasm, he made my small hometown into one of the jazz music hubs in Western Germany. He almost made me into a professional jazz drummer. And that was very inspiring, and it was, was a great experience. And it was still inspiring for me at the beginning of my career when I was a lecturer at university. But that music teacher was very experienced. He knew next to everything in his field. And I knew a little more than my students. And I was not really older than they were. So what could I do? What I did do out of other options was I got in the same boat with the students and said, look, let's share the same learning journey. I'm just a tiny bit ahead, but I understand how you guys feel. And I learned that it makes actually sense to learn what we're learning. And that worked. They did learn, and they did actually accept me as a teacher, which was weird in, that, in the beginning. And we achieved great things, and they were motivated, and I was so motivated. I was so motivated that I never wanted to stop teaching and learning and learning how to teach. And in some way, I'm still doing that in both the roles of a CEO and especially of part of being the team that built a language learning app called Babel. And when we started that nine years ago, more or less, we had the following problem. We knew the market is vast. Competitors, almost no, none. And uh, we imagined a product that would help everybody to learn a foreign language. How great is that? But we had no idea how language learning actually worked. That led us to two mistakes. No, it led us to 100 mistakes, but let me tell you about two. 
Mistake number one. As many tech people, we thought we can just solve this by technology and great design. So we went ahead and built an app. Guess what? That didn't work. We couldn't just ignore hundreds of years of research, experience, and theory in didactics and, and learning theory. So that led us straight away to mistake number two. We uh, got it in our mind to take existing content and courses and bring them online. So we licensed language courses from leading publishing houses. We thought they know what they're doing. And I think still they know what they're doing. But while we were still adapting these great language courses to an online use, we found out that it's not so much only about the, the courses themselves, it's about taking people along through an interactive experience. Because the problem with an app is people are alone with the app. And all the things that, as a teacher, you can do in the classroom, that they have to be built in that, into that app. And uh, so finally, what we settled to was what, of course, in looking back looks obvious, we got some experts on board. Teachers, didactics experts, who exactly knew how you learn a language, together with tech people and designers and, and the didactics experts, we finally built a product that works. And I can tell you, it took us a long time. But for me in that process, there is some kind of a general learning about how teaching works. And that is, it's not enough to have content, knowledge, and a channel or medium to transport it. Doesn't work. You also have to take people along in a journey. You have to motivate them, you have to inspire them, and take them with you. So, in short, as a teacher, you need to be a leader. So, what I think is that those two things are, in a way, in our time, converging. Teachers are not the authority figures anymore that just convey knowledge to students who follow them and, and are able to repeat what the teacher said. And leaders are not the hero decision takers anymore that everybody looks up to and wants to follow. They are more facilitators and, and sometimes even coaches to their teams. I learned that the hard way. When I left academia and entered the startup world around the turn of the century, um, I was to lead a team in a music software company. And uh, again, I was not much older than, than people in my team. I knew rather less than more about the, what, what the team was doing than they, they would do. And I got completely lost in that situation. And I was struggling for what felt an eternity in this. Until, in the end, I did what I did at the university before. I got in the same boat and said, we are in a learning journey together. And I'm also learning what we have to do and how we can achieve that and bring this forward. And once again, that worked. And for me at that time, that was a huge surprise, because as many managers, I felt I was not really fit for the job. I felt somebody made a mistake in choosing me for that position, and the very next day, they will find out. <laughs> and hands down, whoever had that thought in this room? <laughs> that is quite a few. Thank you so much. It makes me feel better. After a time, what I learned is that as a leader, you have to be some kind of a teacher and you have to be a learner. But back to what I'm doing in the moment. Um, when we built Babel um, over nine years, we had one constant north star that we were following. 
one central idea that we never got out of our minds, and that was taking the user's perspective, looking at it from the learner's way, and not just presenting a solution, which happens very often, especially in education. Solution first, problem later. And that was what made us able to learn from these mistakes, iterate, and come up finally with something that works. That, this perspective was what uh, made us succeed where many others failed. And as I said at the beginning, we weren't the specialists, by far not. So for me, that, there's a, another general insight in that. And, and that is to be able to, um, to help others to learn. You have to be learning yourselves. And to do that, you have to get into their shoes. You have to understand the perspective of the learner. And in an online app, of course, you can do that because you have the data and you can follow people. Um, in the real world, that's sometimes harder. But if that's true, what if we took that piece of insight and applied it to leadership? What if uh, we wouldn't talk so much and think so much about leading and obsess a lot more about the achieving side? And what if it was not only for us to help others achieve something, but if we wanted them to be able to do it again by themselves? So yes, I think that leaders should be teachers. And to good, be a good teacher, you need the position of the learners. Our job is not to make people follow us. Our job is to help people achieve and help them to grow and grow with them. I think that it's time that we go from leading and put our focus to learning. That's it. Thank you.